Welcome to the Parasite Podcast, a show about me and you. We are Venom. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Parasite Podcast. And today I have a very special guest because uh, this person, I actually didn't know him uh, personally at all. And a lot of you guys have heard me talk to old friends on this show up until recently. And then I had a couple people that I just recently met. Uh, but I did a podcast a couple months ago where I talked about one of my favorite comedians, Sinbad. And then Sinbad reached out and said, hey, I liked the episode. Thanks so much. And that led me to checking out Sinbad stuff and then finding out his son, uh, you know, is doing stuff in the community on YouTube and on social media and do, sharing nerd stuff and, uh, you know, doing all these great things, creating short films, creating comic books. And once I saw all that, I was like, oh my goodness, I got to talk to him. Uh, thank you for being here. Everyone, please welcome our friend Royce. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. Hey, awesome, man. And Royce, you guys can't see him, but I'll try to include a picture later. He's wearing a Venom uh, shirt today, like a, like a jersey shirt. It's awesome looking. Yeah, had to represent. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, I mean, I uh, first of all, before we get into anything, I if, do you have any social media, anything you want to plug so people can know where to find you? Yeah, uh, so for me personally, uh, my social media is at Roro Beckley, R O R O B E C K L E Y. Um, I'm that on everything, and then uh, the podcast that I have that I share with my dad is called Blurred Empire. Blurred spelled B L E R D Empire, and that you know. You can find us on every social media, the at Blurred Empire, same thing. Awesome. And I'm going to put a link to everything that he just mentioned down below. So you guys are one click away. Make sure you go follow, subscribe, like, you know, become fans because uh, the stuff you guys make is really fun. You know, like I said, I've been a fan of your dad for years, but it was really cool seeing your stuff and me, you know, watching your short film, which we'll talk about here shortly and seeing kind of the comic book stuff that you're working on now. I've become a fan of yours, and so I was so honored that, you know, when I reached out to you, you were like, yeah, man, I'd love to be on. So, again, you know, if I haven't thanked you enough, thank you for being here, man. No, thank you, and thanks for, for checking out my stuff. No, I really appreciate it, you know, because as a creative, it's it's tough to get people to care <laughs> about <laughs> oh. uh, stuff you make. So, no, it really means a lot. <laughs> Absolutely. I know that struggle. I mean, there, I've worked in comics. I've worked in, I've done a lot of things, short films and yeah, just getting even your friends. Like my mom still hasn't even seen most of my stuff. Uh, so yeah, yeah I, know, right. I know the struggle. <laughs> um, so let's begin at the kind of where I start with everyone, Royce, uh, it, which is basically like the origin story. Like how did you get into kind of the, the, the nerd world? Like what appealed to you at first? You know, what were some of your early uh, exposure to this universe that you now kind of, uh, you know, built, like you said, an empire out of? Uh, yeah, I mean, it really, uh, it all goes back to my dad, honestly. Like, he got me, he got me fully immersed um, first time he gave me a Spider-Man comic book, because Spider-Man uh, was his favorite superhero growing up, so he kind of passed that down to me, and Spider-Man quickly became my favorite superhero. Um, and then from there, just once I learned Spider-Man that I wanted to learn so much more about like, okay, what, what other characters do we have? Um, and then he started getting me into the, um, black superhero characters, uh, show me black Panther that blew my mind. I was like, Oh snap, this is great. <laughs> you know? And then just kind of just went from there and just, it just kept growing. Um, and my dad also is a huge tech guy. And so he got me into, into technology. So that kind of all just blended together. Um, but yeah, I, I owe it all to him cause he, uh, he was the nerd before me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it's, yeah, I was looking at your stuff and like, yeah, you don't just talk about comic books and, and stuff like that, but you also, yeah, on your, you, you have a YouTube channel where you, uh, have, you know, a lot of tech products that you're looking at and kind of, uh, you know, opening up and checking out and, and, and breaking it down for people like me who like, I am not tech savvy at all. So it's great to have uh -huh. channels like yours. Cause I'm like, Oh, that's what that is. Okay, cool. Um, you know, so what, right, right. like, uh, do you like that approach? Like, you know, kind of the informative, like, uh, cause that's how I, when I see you on your show, you've, you kind of feel like that where you're like, I like sharing what I love and informing people why I love it. And, and I just want to know, is that, do you get that from your dad too? Or is that something you just like bring to the table? Oh yeah, for, for sure. Definitely got it from my dad as well. Um, the YouTube channel though, it's, it's kind of interesting because I, for the longest, I did not want to do uh, a tech review channel um because you know i just i wanted to focus on my filmmaking sure. and things like that but every friends and family were all like oh you need to do this you need to do that people are making money people are doing this and i'm like ah, all right cool so i finally broke down and started doing it and if i'm talking to somebody one-on-one -on -one, like i i'll talk about tech all day i'll show you anything you you want to know um but i don't know for me when i was doing my channel 
I felt like I was no longer I feel like the fun was kind of lost in it. I was no longer doing it for myself and I was doing it for the views, um, trying to figure out like what was trendy. It's like, Oh, new iPhone came out. Does it suck? You know, like that type of stuff. Cause I felt like that was kind of the, the main way to, to get people to even recognize your channel is, you know, you got to do the clickbait. And then I was like, you know what, forget that. I'm not going to do the clickbait, but then nobody watches my stuff when I do it. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I could just get to a point where I maybe just either don't care if I get the views or not, or, point my attention somewhere else that I actually like really enjoy so as far as my tech review channel I actually pretty much stopped doing that mm -hmm. but in doing so um, once I stopped that I remember I went up to my dad and was like hey so I'm thinking I think what I really want to do is you know talk about what I really really love to talk about no matter what's going on like I realize tech is cool but I can only talk about that for so long but I will always talk about comics I'll always talk about movies um, all, all that stuff. So I told him, well, yeah, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. He's like, yo, okay, cool. Let's do it. And long story short, that's how we started blurred empire because you know, he got me on everything that I love. So he loves talking about it. Probably. I mean, not probably definitely more so than me. Cause him being the comedian, he can talk all day. <laughs> like he, there's no, there's no stopping him once he, once he starts going, uh, which from a podcast standpoint, when we're trying to think about, you know, time and length, <laughs> It can kind of be a problem, but you know, you, you get so much information. It, it's, you know, it, it's fun. So my attention went towards creating blurred empire with my dad and then just building that. And I kind of, I found the fun that I couldn't find when I was doing my tech reviews. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's kind of like how that got started. But with that, I do want to start incorporating like my tech stuff and how to videos within blurred empire okay. um, to kind of, uh, kind of join everything. Cause I realized I can do it in short spurts, but like when the main drive of the channel is just tech, 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 that's where I kind of get burnt out. But if I can just spew some knowledge here and there and mix with our, our daily podcast stuff, I think that helps me kind of keep the, the joy in it all. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, what a lot of people don't think about when they are watching their favorite YouTubers is that, or people who make the content wherever they put post it is that uh, it, it can be if you're not making content that you absolutely love then you will uh -huh. you burn out on it um, you, you really do you really do and like you said even though you have a passion for tech you're like I have a limit and and I uh -huh. I totally get that like that's why people when I tell people like oh I've created 500 plus episodes where I talk about venom they're like, geez, you must really love Venom. And I'm like, well, I love X-Men more, so wait till I start an X-Men show. That's going to be crazy. Ooh, um, nice. <laughs> so so, uh, so, for me, so I, I totally get that. And so, But I, I, do, I do the same thing. I do sometimes Transformer videos on my channel and, uh, and a couple other things I'm a fan of, and those do get the least amount of views. But I, I kind of got to that point where I had to convince myself, hey, don't don't worry about that people come here for venom stuff you're like the venom channel uh -huh. so that's okay you can be that guy and get the views on those videos do the other things for fun because because you need it you don't you don't want to burn yeah. out on venom either you know so the tech idea yeah, i think absolutely. that that's a good idea i i, I think uh integrating it in i think that would be cool thank you yeah no problem um so yeah and doing the stuff with your dad is very fun like i said i, I was on a podcast where i was talking about him and the, you know the person who invited me on he's a comedian too and he's like oh i like to bring guests on and just talk about their favorite comedians and i was talking about your dad and the the funny thing was the whole interview all i was talking about was your dad's work ethic um because i actually got oh, to wow. I, I got to work with your dad actually here in florida one time um on like a reality show uh where they were filming with alligators and stuff and i don't know if it ever oh wow yeah i don't know if it ever aired but i was one of the camera people of that job and i was talking about work ethic and i said you know a lot of my favorite comedians or comic writers or athletes uh, like Jackie Joyner Kersey was like a big inspiration to me when I was a kid because she had asthma and so did I and so, but she still ran and was like an amazing athlete so I, I talk about work ethic all the time and I break people down by their work ethic and so when I that you know kind of when your dad gave me that shout out I was like hey thanks for you know talking about me and it led me to his channel which led me to you I saw that too in you I see you you seem like a very hard worker and uh and and because you, because of your output like you have a lot of stuff going you post every day you're talking about your new comic um which we'll, we'll get to here in a minute and you talk about you know all these things that you're working on your family you got you know a, a newborn uh recently and you know congratulations and um and, thank you yeah and it just i, I gotta know like for you is 
is that something you are aware of yourself and your dad about you know are you aware of how hard you work on things and do you ever think it's it's too much it weighs too much on you um well i know for my dad my dad yeah my dad works super super hard i mean before we all got shut down you know he's on the road three or four times of the week and then when he's home he's like taking meetings and things like that so yeah he he's worked he's worked round the clock and honestly he um just seeing him actually having time to like relax and they like even now he's still working like you know he uh, he's um everybody you know the zoom's the thing now mm-hmm. um so you know he's he's still working and doing things like that he's actually working to put some his own kind of stand up special through he's he's not sure how he wants to do it yet but he's trying to put his own like stand up special virtual stand up special out there so he's still working hard but he at least gets that time to rest that he didn't have when he was constantly on the road um so definitely i think just seeing him literally my entire life that's just how he's always been so i think seeing that kind of embedded in me what it takes to you know to achieve your dreams and not just achieve them but to continually do it every single day uh because i think a lot of people don't take that into consideration they're like okay i'm gonna work so that i can finally get to my goal but they don't always account for the things you need to do to keep that goal uh, you know going for x amount of years or however long you want to keep it or go going beyond that and achieving something new so yeah so i think subconsciously that kind of got embedded in me but the thing is i it's weird like i still feel like i don't just because i I haven't achieved what i've wanted to yet i still feel like i am not doing enough even though i already know i'm doing a lot Mm -hmm. um so if i'm like look if i'm a person outside looking in at myself i would say I'm a hard worker, but for me personally, I always feel like I'm not, you know, I could always be doing something more. Um, So I'm always trying to push myself uh, that way to the, you know, to the point where you've noticed I I do a lot of different things. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, so I... I know I'm a hard worker, but it's hard for me to like say it myself, if that makes sense. No, I get it. I mean, and you're you're young. I think you're younger than me, actually. And uh, I, when I... I know that mentality. It's like I don't think I work as hard as other people think I work, um, and uh-huh. and I totally get that mentality. I think it's something built in our generation where uh, because you of your dad and me and my grandfather and my mom, like they've both, you know, my grandma. I mean, my grandfather had he worked. He built, you know, made steel for this country, and like my mom, she's oh, worked. Wow. She's my mom's worked two or three jobs her entire life. Uh, she's uh-huh. she's she's never really ever had days off, and. Uh, so I think when we have that as our role model, I think you're right. I think we're, we're like, well, yeah, okay. Someone says, oh, you're hardworking. You're like, I don't know. I've seen hardworking. <laughs> um, right, right. <laughs> and, and so and be, so, me and you always think, ah, I can do more. I can do more. But, but I mean, I think that's good. But then there's also a limit, right? Like you, we talk about burning out. So it's sometimes it's good to listen to a loved one or a family member when they say, hey, you got you to gotta rest today. Um, do, you, uh-huh. do you find yourself struggling when you hear people say that to you? Um, honestly, not, not really. Like I, I would say I'm, I'm, I've learned to kind of be good at when to kind of take a moment for myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think mainly because a lot of things that I do, like I get a lot of inspiration from more of like leisure activity. So like watching movies, you know, even though like for other people that just might be just time like and it's still leisure but for me it's kind of a combination of both where i'm watching movies because i enjoy to watch movies but i'm also using this time to study right because you know if i want to be you know this big time director i need to watch all the greats um and study this and see how things were done so it's like it's leisure slash school so everything i do i try to combine a little bit of both um because like even when i'm playing video games i'm studying like how um, pretty much like how they're telling stories, how they're figuring out different ways to incorporate the gameplay and telling stories to see how I can incorporate that in my storytelling in some way. So I'm, even though I'm taking time, I'm still allotting some energy <laughs> to right. uh, to my work or to my to my future work. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, that's kind of like been a good good balance in in kind of like how I take time off, but not really. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, <laughs> makes perfect. Same thing with me, like. Uh, comic books are my life so it's like i read but i'm i'm not just reading like i used to be a comic book editor and a writer so i'm still studying i'm still learning from people um i think it was 
can't remember if it was Bruce Lee, but I was like, someone said, and it's a phrase that stuck with me ever since I was a kid, but I can never remember who says it, but they said, never stop being a student. And, uh, right, exactly. Yeah, and I, and I always love that phrase. And um, so you saying now about film and watching film, like that's a great transition to your short film. So you actually did, um, you've done a lot of great work. You've worked in sound department on movies. You've done different things. But you have a, a short film that I saw, uh, and forgive me if you have others, but we can talk about them too. But the one I watched was called The Girl With No Brain. Uh, and this, uh-huh. came, I think you released it in 2018. It's uh, essentially about a, a, a child who's born without, of of a brain and an AI cube is put into the brain or where the brain would be to help keep the young girl alive and help her functioning and also to see, you know, if it would work, I guess. And so you told this really interesting story with that, uh, which reminds me of something I've worked on and something I've gone through, not exactly, but, but similarly in my personal life, where did that concept come from for you? Well, um, First and foremost, I mean, I'm a huge sci-fi nut, so that's like, I can't write anything that's not sci-fi. I've tried, <laughs> it just, I just can't do it. Like, there's got to be some kind of like weird futuristic concept to it. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of just naturally always approach stuff, my storytelling from that perspective. But it really all came from this article I came across of these parents where their their child was literally born without a brain mm-hmm. and. The child survived um, until she was about eight years old, mm-hmm. and um, the parents talked about their journey and and you know the the backlash they received. Like you know they were said they would call they were called selfish for keeping their child al- uh, uh, alive that long, even though she had no you know form of life really. Right. Um, and but they said for them it was still like it was, as long as their daughter was alive and breathing she deserved a shot at life so i thought it was very like it was very touching story and just showing like the true love of these parents and you know how far they were willing to go just to keep their their daughter alive and you know it just got me thinking like man like what what if there what if there was something that was made that could have you know could have helped them like they kept the daughter alive for a certain amount of time and then somebody approaches them like hey look so we've been testing this you know we might be able to to give your daughter some quality of life and that eventually became uh the basis for what ended up being the girl with no brain um because then i was like okay cool well what if it was like um if they couldn't really stimulate the brain where she could form her own consciousness so to speak you know what if they uh what if like ai played a part because the thing with uh, ai movies i think uh, a lot of reasons why more recent ones have become stale is like the approach is essentially always the same it's about an ai um a robot who's either you know trying to be normal but then realize they're not normal and then they either try and destroy everybody and kill everybody (laughs) or you know they they, they're just kind of like stuck in their you know robotic form or what have you um so i was like all right well what if i changed that concept and approached it of putting an ai inside of a human's body but that ai is brought up you know to act human because movie you know movies have done that where an ai tries to act human but still has an artificial body so to speak um you know, unless, you know, like Bicentennial Man, where he literally made himself human. <laughs> right. um, but for the most part, like whenever an AI story is told, the person is still an android, the person's still a robot to, you know, to some degree. So there's always that separation for the viewer. Um, so then I'm like, OK, well, what if we take that separation away and we imbue the AI element and the human element? And if the AI can successfully act and be human inside of a human body what now what does that mean does, at that point is the ai actually human because it, now that the ai is running this body that has full working organs and can breathe and can sleep all that stuff do the same rules apply so that's kind of like where it started and um eventually it grew from that to well you know what what if it's just the story of this ai that's in this girl and she's now a teenager um um and you know when the when the short film starts and what if this ai is just like look i just i just want to be human yes i know i'm a human body right. um but i want you to not just acknowledge my human body but acknowledge that the fact that yes i am an ai and i want you to love me for that as well like sure. don't dismiss it so yeah just trying to just trying to play with those elements and just seeing you know what kind of 
uh, uh, outcome that could give. Yeah, I mean, I got to say, you did a really good job. I love the camera work in it. I think the actress did a really great job. And uh, and Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I mean, it really was. Um, I got emotional uh, watching it. If you guys who are listening to this, the link is down below. I'll put the link to the, uh, the YouTube video. Um, so I'm a multiple brain aneurysm survivor. And I have, oh, wow. okay. I have, uh, I surprise a lot of people with that because, um, and that's why I talk about work ethic all the time. I work really hard mm-hmm. to, um, to look and sound normal is, is, is how mm-hmm. other people put it. Um, I don't like that word normal, but, um, but I, when I, and I've been through stuff with, um, procedures and, and so when I, you're right, actually what people would do to save their child is, um you you wouldn't believe it until you were in that situation right um and i do remember that story actually when you, the about the young girl with the brain um anything regarding brains and stuff i i take mention of and so when i was watching this i i i really did i had a nice emotional pull to it um but also reminded me i did a story and like you said most ai stories kind of go the same way mine is very similar to the standard which is um i wanted when i i guess when i was coming back into the world i i used to be an artist uh, but i i struggled doing it now i used to want to be a comic book artist and i was pr- i was i was decent i wasn't great but i was learning um but i i can't do it anymore it's really hard so um so i created a book called alan vital uh which uh, was about the first robot that is given a human soul um and then one of the ways they try to get the robot to use utilize the soul is to have a create artwork, you know, whether it be music or paintings or whatever, you know, a, a stand-up comedy. It tries all these different forms of art to try to understand if the emotion that it takes to do those things actually comes from within, or if it's just mirroring, you know, behavior that it's seen before. And that's that was right. that was kind of my kind of approach to it. And uh, but he, just seeing your your stuff, it it was very cerebral. It, it it clearly you put a lot of time and effort into it, and. And I and like I said, I, I noticed that about uh, people's work. I can watch something and go, "Wow!" Like, like I don't know what your budget was on that, but I would imagine every penny you spent went on screen when you when you made that movie. Um, and it, it yeah it, yeah yeah. And I and I, it's something I say to people, and they don't understand what that means. But I go, sometimes you can get give somebody ten million dollars, and their movie looks like it was made for fifty bucks. Um, right, but, right. But some <laughs> some and they're like, who pocketed the rest of that money? But then mm-hmm. you see someone who gets like a budget of like ten thousand dollars, and you see every penny on screen utilized the best way possible. What are some of your, you know, in speaking with that, and then other types of stories you've told, and we'll and we'll lead into your comic book as well, um, which is, mm-hmm. you know, in creating all that, obviously there's it's not just creativity, but you got to have a sense of business and planning and leadership, and there's all these things. So, you know, do you find yourself? struggling with any one of those elements that are outside the creativity that you're trying to be better at or do you find a lot of this comes naturally because the, the product you want to make is it, it feels good to make it and so that kind of is your 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 you know pointing north for you um well i will say it for me it it's really hard cuz i'm all about the creative um, so I'm all about the, the writing process and then the actual filmmaking process and directing and working with the actors. And, and actually, fun fact, uh, the lead actress in Girl With No Brain, that's actually my younger sister. Oh. Uh, her name's Rachel. And it, that, like, I think that's what really kind of helped to, like, push, push the elements because we were able to, like, kind of talk and, and have these conversations that I think um, we were able to kind of dig deeper than I would have um, at least like in the, the time period, cause we shot that so fast, yeah. like there was barely any time for rehearsals or nothing. So, um, being able to, to have those moments with her, I think helped kind of invoke some of those, uh, emotions throughout the film, which were great. Um, but yeah, like the, the whole, like the fu- actual funding process, like I actually, I absolutely hate, um, <laughs> and I do some producing my, myself. Um, I, I'm good at it when I need to do it, but it I need to be just a producer. If I'm trying to produce and I'm like the creative side, if I'm directing, what have you, it's really hard to for me to balance both of those worlds because I just the creative side will always take over. Right. And um it's it's especially with like with 
short films and when you're working because like we shot that to next to nothing um and just you know it was out of the, the grace of um amazing people friends family uh coming together and thankfully all of them just being on board with the story we were trying to tell and that like mentally just trying to get that done was crazy like um my dp my original dp for that project dropped out like eight hours before it was time to shoot Ugh. and so that <laughs> like so i you know went to bed kind of thinking like all right whatever i'm just gonna direct and shoot this myself i don't care uh, <laughs> i'll find some way to get it done but uh lo and behold um my one of my producers she uh found someone she actually found uh uh this gaffer uh, and his name's Dave will Waco mm. and he was going to gaff. And then it just kind of like helped me, uh, shoot while we did it. But then through talking, I learned that, you know, he was actually trying to be a DP and I'm like, yo, you want to just shoot this thing? <laughs> and he was like, uh, really? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. Here's the camera. <laughs> and so he shot it and was able, you know, it, and it looks amazing. And mm. a big part is because of him. And because of that, you know, I've now worked with him on other stuff. Like he's my go-to whenever I need a project shot. Um, he he's now my go-to DP because of that. Um, but it's just like that whole process, the whole like dumbness that just goes into making films is just so draining. But when at the end of the day, when you actually have something, you know, it kind of makes it all worth it. But I would say for me, if I if I could have it my own way, I would. Oh, just the creative side but unfortunately when you're an indie filmmaker um you don't get that luxury so you got to wear multiple hats and do whatever you need to do to get it done so that's why it's important that whatever you're working on you got to love that thing because if you don't love it you you're not going to make it yeah absolutely and uh, and for those listening if you heard a little bit of static there I'm sorry, I guess there's like a helicopter that went overhead and it, it caused a little bit of static, but um, but I caught the, the gist of what you were saying. And, and you're right, I mean, like making films, like I've been there, I've worked on sets and uh, especially indie stuff, it's it's hard work. I mean, it's, it's uh, like you said, everyone's doing it out of their own grace, out of their own, um, you know, willingness uh, and belief in the project. And it's so great that you pulled together a great crew and that guy sounds amazing that you use for your DP sounds like you got good producers to recommend someone like him and then also yeah your younger sister she crushed it man she did a great job in that role awesome thank you thank you yeah, she'd be happy to hear that <laughs> yeah. and uh, and so so let, let's juxtapose that with making a, an indie film you know like that and then jumping into indie comics because I, I also know uh -huh. what that's like and I know how hard that is um, what is uh -huh. you have a book now it's coming out or it's actually it's a web comic you can uh I, i'll have a link down below at, at webtoons and if there's any other place you want to mention where people can check it out um but it's through like a patreon too right um so i i have a patreon mm -hmm. which is pretty much there to help um help me continue to make uh pretty yeah to help me make the comics okay because i have um um I can go into a little bit more, but Al Legend of Althea is actually my second comic book that yeah. um, I'm currently working on, and yeah, it's out on it's out on uh, Webtoon. If you go to uh, either Webtoon.com or if you download the Webtoon app, um, I have three episodes out now, and I'm planning to release an actual like physical issue one printed copy uh, within the next few months that I'll you know hopefully uh, can ship out to people who who want them. That's awesome. And yeah, so Legend of Althea, um, let's talk about this for a minute because, you know, the storyline, you, uh, you have a young lady who is in, in need of, a, or she had a heart transplant, but the uh -huh. superpower abilities that came from that is that she can now heal other people, but it's not just so simple. There's actually a cost, uh, you know, for this. So was there, you know, I mean, that's what I like about that is that that's very, uh, I always talk about um, dichotomies in powers, like where it's like, oh, I have this great power, but it hurts to use it or whatever. It's um, So with that kind of story, I mean, obviously that sounds very, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, heart-wrenching, obviously. I don't want to have a dark side pun there. Um, but uh, but it has, you know, it comes from a similar place like your, your, like the girl with no brain in, in a way too. Was there a real-life story inspiration for this or were you just thinking of uh, kind of that old X-Men adage of, you know, where it's like, oh, I have this ability, but there's there's a, a, a sometimes a negative connotation to that ability as well? 
Yeah, it um this one kind of has two origins. So again, it was <laughs> started from reading another article about um this it was this guy who had um who had to have a heart transplant, but I forgot the exact reason, but he they had to keep his heart um in a bag. So it's like kind of like connected. He has this backpack where his heart is in and it's like connected to him that way. Yeah. Um, I, for, I forget exactly what the you know the whole that whole process was called, but I just you know I thought that was so interesting. Um, and then he even talked about how with his donor he started kind of like feeling, um, kind of like what he felt was like the essence of you know the the donor or whoever the person that he received the heart from, and so that idea kind of stuck with me and I started researching it more. I started reading some books on on heart transplants and. I really got stuck on this idea of like transferring like people's memories or personalities being transferred um, through um, pretty much uh, different types of organ transplants and actually was creating a web series more kind of based on that concept. And, you know, it wasn't really as sci-fi as it is now, but just off of that concept. Um, But I kind of hit a wall with that and didn't really know what to do. So I kind of just threw it aside. Um, and it wasn't until later, um, about like years later where I kind of like revisited that idea and I was like, okay, well, how can I do this differently? And then I thought back to, uh, when I was in high school, I don't know if, uh, you ever played this game called city of heroes. It was an MMO. Yeah. I remember that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, man, I loved that game. It was, (laughs) I, I played it all the time and I was a healer and it was, you know, if people don't know who are listening, who don't know the game, it's a massive multiplayer online game, kind of like world of Warcraft, but more about superheroes. And you literally can create your own superhero, their own set of powers, your own cool costumes. And, you know, you level up and then eventually, you know, you get the ability to fly or you can super jump, you can teleport, like all this cool stuff. Um, you can make, it turned out like you can, and a lot of people ended up making their characters look like Marvel and DC characters, (laughs) which ended up, with the game getting sued a lot and losing a lot of money. And I think that's why I got shut down, yeah. but I was a healer and I just remember just like how fun it was to just kind of be that person that just healed people. And, you know, like you have healers like in other MMO games, like in fantasy games, but kind of like how they did it, I thought was really cool and unique. And so we just be going through all these boss levels and I'm keeping everybody alive. I'm running back and forth because I had I was healer but I had super speed. So I'm like dashing back and forth, healing people across the battlefield and it was just like a lot of fun and um there was one boss level where literally we were all getting destroyed but I was healing, I was resurrecting and we finally won and everyone's like, yo man, you're like you're the best healer we ever played with. Like that's amazing. So so at the end of that I was just really proud of myself and I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I I, I did it. And um, and I kind of was thinking like, man, like healers kind of get a bad rap. Like they're always the, the support supporting class in like every story, you know? And I was like, I, but I was kind of the reason why everybody was alive. Like, why can't the healer be the main character? And so that was like a idea I had back in high school. And, um, and I know there've been some other characters since then, um, some with healing abilities and things like that who, who have like become the forefront. Um, but then you know fast forward to last year uh fall of last year when i started writing althea and um when i was looking back at the heart transplant story for whatever reason something i think i saw a clip like talking about like oh man like what what happened to city of heroes and that kind of like relaunched that idea and i was like okay wait a minute what if i infuse these two and instead of like it being like memory based um with this heart heart transplant what if like because of this she actually gets the ability to heal because um you know kind of like the overall message i want to i'm trying to 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 get with this ultimately is althea like everything she does like it comes from a state of love comes from a state of her just you know internally just being a caring person and, and and caring about people who are around her and a lot of that stems from personal loss she's gone through which i'll get into you know further down the line um I was like, that. I think that actually be pretty cool. And so I was like, okay, well, maybe if it's like this, like this artificial heart for unexplained reasons, right? Um, gives her kind of like taps into her essence of being this caring person, and because of that, this it like imbues her with the ability to actually heal people. Um, but because of that, you know, and I, I like, I like superhero stories where when a person uses their powers, it's not like they just have an unlimited amount. I love when heroes like physically get tired or drain you know it drains them or even if they're 
own ability causes them pain. So I wanted to do that with Althea where she's literally giving her like life force or her essence really to somebody to save their life. So she's kind of in a way giving up little bits of her own life or herself to save someone else. Um, so that's where the, the other side of it comes. So as the story goes on, she's going to have to start learning like, okay, I can't just go around just healing people willy nilly. Like I have to be very cautious. And if I do too much, I can end up, she can end up killing herself. Sure. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of how all that came together. Um, she, she'll need like a Jim Gordon, but like a doctor or a nurse. <laughs> or right. She, yeah. She'll be like, all right, I'm, I'm bringing this patient to you because you're good and you can save them and I don't have to use my powers. Uh, right, right. Yeah. A little mix of both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but then, no, that's that's outstanding. You know, I remember City of Heroes. That was a fun game, and you're right. It did cause a lot of problems with uh, myself included creating characters that look like Marvel characters. Um, so, you know. That's awesome. Oh, so you, so you, you played City of Heroes? Yeah, I played. I was in college, I think, like later years of college when that game came out. So I was I played a little bit of it. I, I didn't I didn't play it for very, very long, but I think I played it for mm-hmm. maybe up until the first expansion of it. Yeah. Uh, City, nice. City, yeah. Of, City of Villains. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, City of Villains. Yeah, that that was always one of my favorite games. Um, <laughs> if anybody from NC Soft, the makers of City of Heroes, so you somehow listen to this podcast, please bring it back because I love that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if you're if you're if you're listening to this podcast, thank you. And yes, please do bring right. it back. That'd be great. Uh, and uh, and go let you go check out Blurred Empire too, please. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then make City of Heroes. <laughs> you're um, <laughs> dude. You're awesome. No, I'm 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 having a blast talking to you. And I so. You. You're you're very creative, dude. I, I love the stuff you're putting out. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm a big fan of your dad's, but um, now I'm just a big fan of yours. And you know, you earlier talking about um, you know, comic books and like uh, the Marvel characters. You kind of got in with Spider-Man. That was your dad's favorite character. You know, what is your do? You, first of all, do you and your dad read current comic books uh, still? Um, honestly, I've I've had to get back into that. Um. So after high school, I kind of started falling a little bit out of love with comics. I think it had to do a lot with when the movie started coming out. Um, it was kind of conflicting for me. Um, I know we, we were talking uh, before the show how there's a lot of negativity sometimes around comics and just kind of like the comic book culture. Sure. Um, but yeah, I was having a really hard time relating to some of those early movies, especially, specifically the Spider-Man movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it just kind of left a bad taste in my mouth where, you know, the, uh, the, even like the slightest things, like the first Spider-Man movies, like I know they're hailed as, you know, being the best and all that stuff. But for me, it's like I look at small things and I'm like, okay, well, this guy didn't even have his web shooters. And that's like a big part of who Spider-Man is. Yeah. And, you know, and now people are running around thinking like Spider-Man doesn't have web shooters. And then when I try to explain to them what web shooters are, they're like, oh, well, that's stupid. I can see why they got rid of it. And I'm like, how <laughs> dare you <laughs> how dare you say that to me you know <laughs> and so because of that um since you know now like it started blowing up now everybody knows who spider-man is and people i feel like i was getting rejected for knowing what the comics were actually about and made fun of that for first it was like i was making i was being made fun of for not for for reading comics in the pr- first place <laughs> now i was being made fun of for actually knowing who the character actually was and not <laughs> always how it was in the movies so for me it kind of just messed me up mentally and i was like all right well screw it if knowing the comics doesn't even matter anymore then i don't even want to be a part of it because it was just for, for me just the connections i have with those characters it was just too emotional to just sit in that theater and just be like man see what <sighs> man i can't you know and that that type of thing so once i kind of just let go of the comics um i was able to at least enjoy the movies a little bit more which you know i wish i could be that person that could do both like read the comics and appreciate the movies for what they are but i you know where i was like mentally and emotionally at that time i wasn't able to do that and so that ultimately led me to just not caring about reading comics anymore um so then but then later on, now I'm hearing like all these like cool, amazing storylines. I'm like, crap, man, I didn't read those. And now I'm like, for me, um, being this like comic purist, people are talking about stuff about comics. And I'm like, man, I don't even know what y'all are talking about. <laughs> and like now I like feel left out. But then I'm like, is it too late to go back and read them? You know, so it was just kind of like a uh, I felt like I was kind of like stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, but ultimately what I ended up doing, because I knew I still didn't really want to go back because ultimately they were still making movies and um, into where they are now. 
But what I started doing was then kind of converting my energy into reading indie comics, and that kind of implanted the seed, which would eventually lead me to start writing my own comics and started you know, reading stories that people, you know, wouldn't look necessarily know or, or look over, at least until they become movies. But I kind of started falling back in love with people I didn't even know, with characters I really didn't know that well, but I thought they were cool. And, you know, not all of them might be as epic as all the Marvel or DC characters, but there were little things about them that I really liked. And the fact that, you know, th- there weren't any movies based off of them yet, it was kind of like I was a kid again, and I can just kind of enjoy them for, you know, what they were in comic book form. That's a great perspective. Like, um, you know, I, I, I do. Like, I, I, I've been in and out of indie comics my whole life. Like, uh, some of my early, one of my first indie comics, I think, ever that wasn't Marvel or DC was The Crow, um, which, mm, which is yeah. still still one of my favorite movies, my favorite comic book movies. Um, but then uh, I got into Spawn. I actually have every issue of Spawn. I love Al Simmons. He's one of my favorite characters. Um, Dope. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm a big X-Men fan. I'm, I'm Actually, it's funny, too, because... You were talking earlier about you know you started with Spider-Man and then you were your dad kind of showed you Black Panther and some of the you know the black superheroes of the the different universes, uh-huh. and I was kind of like that too. I, I got a stack of comics when I was a kid. I was in the hospital and my mom brought me a stack of comics, and in there was like an Iron Man comic, but Iron Man at that time was Rhodey was War Machine, um, mm, okay. so so I thought Iron Man was was black when he first came. Oh, that's so cool. And then same with Green Lantern. Green Lantern was John Stewart at the time. Right. And and I was like, oh, so when people would refer to Green Lantern and Iron Man, I'm like, oh yeah, Rhodey and, and uh, John Stewart. And they're like, what are you talking about? Like, how dare you? They're like, they're like, Rode, Rhodey's War Machine. I go, oh, I only have like three issues of Iron Man and Rhodey's Iron Man and all three issues. I don't know what you want me to say. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a fun universe. Like I love indie comics. Milestone was a big thing when I was a kid too. That introduced me to yes. Static and you know and uh, um, all these icon. Re- icon. Oh, I love Icon and Rocket. They're my favorites. Yeah. Um, but so, you know, having this, you know, that l- love, I understand. Like you're like, all right, now you're reading indie stuff, and you're like, this is great. I'm back on a on an. Uh, like a clean slate as far as knowledge goes and i could i could i could see that but also what i like is that because you create indie comics i'm telling you and you probably know this already the more involved you get with the indie creator scene especially in comics i I spent years doing that i go to conventions see the same people in artist alley every year we'd have a a new book we'd we'd help each other push each other's books and it's such a great community and it's uh it really is yeah and i'm so glad you're a part of it man because i i think you have looking at your body of work um like and so far like you know just just the few things that i've seen there i mean not to to pat you on the back too much man i don't want to you know get, fill your ego or anything but i gotta you say man free. i feel free i <laughs> I, I i personally I, I just i i that was one of my things and as an editor was being able to see talent right away and i if if you don't mind me saying i see a lot of talent in you and i think the future of comics and movies are only going to benefit from your love for both of them. Well, thank you. I mean, that, that really, that really, really means a lot um, to, to hear that. I really appreciate that. And you will have a fan in me till the day I'm gone and probably soon, uh, even long after, cause I'll be watching him from another life. And uh, I, I, I love your stuff, man. And I, I, I can't thank you enough today uh, for being here and everyone out there, please link down below to uh, the girl with no brain. And then also uh, to legend of Athea. I'll put a link to the webtoon uh, down there and it has the Patreon link there. If you want to check that out and, and support Royce's work and please check out blurred empire, see all the great work he does with his dad and, you know, and, uh, and become a fan of this guy because I'm telling you, this is, he's one of those names at five years from now, you're going to be like, holy crap. And, and I'm going to be like, <laughs> yes, he was on my podcast. Yes. Right. Um, but, uh, but no, your, your body of work speaks volumes and I can't wait to see what you create next, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and, uh, with the webtoon, I just want to point out real quick. It's actually right now it's part of uh webtoons short story contest. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if whoever reads this, if you can just give, Legend of Althea, a subscribe on Webtoon and, you know, like the episodes that, that goes a long way to, to helping me get recognized on the platform, too. There you go, guys. And make sure you share it and try to get some of uh, the rest of the parasites out there to support this. This guy is a Spider-Man fan, a Venom fan, so he's one of ours. And we take care <laughs> of our own because we are Venom here. So, uh, Royce, any last words before I let you go, sir? Uh, no, just thank you for having me. I'm, I'm so glad I, I had this conversation with you. And hopefully we'll have many more in the future at some point. 
Absolutely. All right, man. You take care of yourself and everybody watching the show and listening. Thank you so much. Check out the links down below and leave your comments down below for me and Royce. If you have any questions, let us know down there and we'll check them out and we'll answer them for you. Uh, thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.